Okay, um, glad to see so many interested people. <laughs> I haven't seen so many people because I've been in the forest for some time. That's why it says forest made. <laughs> Are you still in the forest? No. Okay. It's too cold and dark now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the solar panels are not uh, charging okay. as they were <laughs> between May and uh, like July, August. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was very good for for uh, uh, focus and concentration. Mm -hmm. was. But on the other hand, it was a bit lonely. <laughs> so I'm actually kind of glad to be around people again. Uh, right, just a, yeah, the, my contact information if you, if you want it. Uh, so, yeah, and this is uh, Blocky, my small company. We're actually three people now, uh, but I'm the, I'm the one, uh, or actually the, 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 the new guy is also very active now. But I'm, I'm very, very active and he's also very active and uh, the second guy is uh, Doing the logotypes and stuff, so he can, comes in when he need, he's needed. Um, yeah, just a short. When I was a kid, I wanted to do uh, games, of course. That's why I get into programming in the first place. So it was uh, assembly, some treaty stuff, just for fun. It was really fun times. And later on, I started doing a lot of di distributed uh, coding. Uh, so I, I did my own relational database, uh, it was distributed uh, with, with indexing and key value and stuff. Then I got into storage and, and did a distributed block storage solution. Uh, it was an implementation of the uh, request for comments, uh, 3720, and that was as well as a database implemented in Python. Uh, but then I started with Blocky. And Blocky is written in C++ and uh, Lua. Anyone heard about Lua? Yes. 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 Yeah. You seem very happy about it. Big fan. Yeah. <laughs> it's this neat little, yeah. very neat, cool language. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's good about Lua? Uh, it's very. Uh, it's really. It's designed to uh, to in, to kind of link into your C or C++ or something. Right. So it has a very very small footprint. And it's more than fast, it runs well on mobile devices. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah, even like 10 years ago. I used it for scripting in mobile game. <laughs> cool. that, was a, that was like a Nokia. Yeah. <laughs> so there were calls before the iPhone. On yeah. the slow based program, programming mailing lists, they were very interested in, about that. Actually, ah. Paul Morris on himself it was like. About Lua? Yeah, like for flow based programming. Oh, I, cool. I don't know exactly how, but. Yeah. This mm -hmm. kind of seem to see it. Cool, that's very cool. Yeah, I like it because it's uh, like in, in, in like three D games, we have very CPL bound stuff. Uh, there's a lot of Lua going on, uh, so I heard at least. <laughs> so that's why I chose uh, C plus plus and Lua because uh, C plus plus because I really wanted to get close to the metal. Um, I don't want to. Python is very cool, but I, I want to get closer to the metal. Um, not to be restrained by, by a too high level language. But then I use Lua for, for a lot of other uh, logic stuff inside, so it's very neat. And if something runs slow in Lua, we can always port it back to C++. So I find it a very... Did you, has Lua the same problem on Python as a global interpreter lock? No, 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 no. So it avoids that? Yeah, uh, Lua is kind of small, so, so, so you can run like... Um, um, Python is kind of self-contained, uh, and if you want, then, then you can link C libraries into, into Python. Uh, but, but in Lua, it's more of the other way around. Uh, I guess you can do that in Python as well, but it's still a very big thing. Uh, no, so so you just run Lua. You can have one Lua uh, interpreter in each process or in each thread. So there is no such. Uh, because well, the global interpreter lock is, uh, is like uh, snuck up on me and really just backstabbed me and left me in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, but Lua has no support for threads at all, basically. Lua has threads, but I don't use Lua. I use threads through C++. 
and then I have uh, Lua inside this trend. But, but I don't, so, but Lua has threads, yes, but, but I, I do not multi-thread Lua. Loki is multi-threaded, but uh, not thanks to Lua, I put it like that. Uh, yeah, we are on Indiegogo. So I guess that was just a small uh, intro about, uh, about myself. Now, so I'm going to show you this a bit, a bit of Lucky. Are, are you working full time on Lucky? Are you working, consulting on the side? Or no, no, no. I, uh, I just quit everything in my life to focus on Lucky. Okay. Cool. I, I uh, yeah, after uh, my, my master, I, uh, I was consulting. And then I was working full time for like half a year, and then I just uh, quit everything, including my apartment, and just moved to the forest. <laughs> so now I'm back uh, back indoors, but I don't have a place of my own. I'm just uh, you know bumming around. So and it feels very good to be very focused on one thing in life. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Cool. So uh, and and uh, Blocky came came about kind of. It's really, I think Morrison also said that, says that it's just a very natural step, like in the in coding. So, so that was just the same feeling I had. This is making things easier, things easier you know. Uh, all right. So let's see if I have the demo devil on my side or not. Right, so here it is, uh, the interface, and it is, uh, yeah, you, I guess you're going to see what it's about, but it's um, about uh, components and reusing components and stuff. So I'll just create a bit easy service here. Dun, 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 dun. So I'll just give this a uh, small name. Um, yeah, so this is kind of uh, the prototype of the of the interface. So it's still a bit uh, a bit messy. It's still a bit uh, hard to configure some stuff. But I'm iterating this every day, so it's getting easier and easier. Uh, right. So I'll give this a name. Call it test. Uh, I don't know. You know. Will you walk us through what do, what do these components do? Right yeah, now? absolutely. Uh, so I will just do something very very easy that you can easily do in Python as well. <laughs> but I'm, I will show you. Uh, let's see what we have. A string. So, so this is your this is a public entry to uh, whatever service you want to create. It could be a REST service, or it could be something that listens to incoming emails, or whatever protocol you would want to implement for your stuff. But HTTP is uh, you know probably the most popular unwanted thing. So that is, that is what I'm going to show now. Uh, so this has a name, that is how we're going to access it, and uh, we're just uh, uh, putting our HTTP adapter here, okay. So we will listen to uh, whatever comes in uh, on the uh, post, because you're, fam you're familiar with HTTP, yeah? So we're going we're gonna to post something here. <coughs> We will just uh, split that. Um, I think we're gonna just iterate it. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we, can, we can reverse all, every string and then we will just push every string to an array and uh, yeah, we will just join them. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just do this. This resolution is uh, So, uh, well, we, we can wait with, uh, with this one. Like this. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to tell you what I've done. <laughs> I'm going to, with the C URL, I'm going to just post something into the service. And it will be a string. Uh, we will just split it on some delimiter. So we get an array from, from this to the diff. And we will iterate over this array. <coughs> that means that uh, every iteration will, will come here. And for now, we'll just push back the actual string back to a new array. And when the iteration uh, is done, it will come out on here. And we'll just join, uh, join that array back to a string. So at the end of the day, we will have exactly the same thing out that we put in, for now. Because then we're going to reverse all the strings. But we will save that. Uh, okay, I get back my menu. Save this. Okay, so it's called, this service is called test11. And my user is uh, Bucklion. So, there we go. Uh, okay. That's my username. This is the service name, and that is the Name of the first block. Remember? This block was, I gave it the name HTTP. And um, this is the name of the service, and this is my username. So in this public entry, it creates a REST kind of REST uh, endpoint. <coughs> yeah, it's an endpoint, and it becomes a REST endpoint when I connect the HTTP adapter. Mm. Because you can have, uh, it can be some other protocol. Mm. Right, right. You can, can have multiple um, public entries per, per product? Yeah, absolutely. And also you can have, uh, say that you have, uh, we were talking about this, about how uh, things get too big after a while. So, so you can have like, you can make a public entry and then, and then you can have uh, you can make, make a new service and the other service can just uh, message this service mm -hmm. here and that's actually what, what I'm doing now but I, I, I don't show you them, those now but I have like a document store a, a file storage service and uh, some stuff but it's, just keep it to this now All right Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll just start this like that. So that it should be running now. Uh, oh, sorry, I have to put in some data. Yeah, now that was a, a normal GET request. So uh, let me put this in reboot. Mm. Uh, oh, anyway, you see, 404 not found. Simply because I was doing a GET, but uh, I had nothing connected to the GET port. So, we are going to do a, uh, a post, so do like this, and kind of go like uh, Tom, who name was? Dalion. Uh, uh, and? Malde. Malde. <laughs> okay, I'm going to Malde. Right, so, it went in and it came out the exact same way. Hold it, hold it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> now we are, we are, we are, okay, stop this one, stop it, chop chop. Just put this one in here. How do you know what to put out? Is there, since there were multiple loose ends in this uh, structure. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's only one up, wasn't it? The array push, how does that go into the string join in the end? Ah, it, um, uh, I'm going to show this a bit more visual very soon, but the thing that happens, thank you, very good question. Very good. Uh, the data comes in here, the message, and it goes, and when it reach a, uh, uh, when it cannot go out anymore, it starts to bubble upwards. Mm -hmm. And so this one will bubble upwards here, and it will iterate another time if there is another uh, thing in the in the array. And when it's done, it will go on this one. So our new array will go out here. Uh, it will rejoin it, and we have nothing connected to out, so it will bubble back up. Okay. That's a good way of uh, reducing the number of connections. Thank you. Yeah, but what happens when it bubbles up, up through string rev? Wouldn't it like reverse it again? Uh, I, I, um, no, not here, mm -hmm. but there are blocks that uh, act upstream instead of downstream. Okay. But Can I act both? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like uh, some, uh, some message ma manipulation blocks that uh, maybe I, j I just want to only an upstream because I, I want to fetch something downstream, I want it to bubble up, and then I want to manip manipulate on it. Mm -hmm before I let it go. <laughs> yes, then similarities to backtracking in Prolog? Yeah. Uh, I haven't used Prolog. All right. Or well, like in a functional language, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a chain. Yeah. It's a chain that goes through. And this chain can, of course, be, it can be uh, quite long, but if you want to, you can, of course, just you can bubble it up to some uh, common point, and then you can just uh, send it out on, on your next. Uh, there are some uh, blocks that do that. Mm -hmm. I, I send it on port one first. When I get the bubble, I send it on port two. So I, I don't, maybe you want, you want to keep your bubbling short. What would happen if the bubbling wouldn't end up at, at the start? I mean, does the public entry hold a reference to the uh, callback and if the bubbling doesn't come, would it like... You mean if, if there was some kind of uh, yeah. exception? Yeah. Uh, what happens is that every block has a kind of a timeout strategy. So, and that strategy right now is just to return uh, either server error or 404 not found. So, so if say that uh, there is some kind of bug that makes uh, something crash, uh, eventually uh, all these that are, are involved in this kind of call tree uh, will get more or less garbage collected, um, and and the client will will have just get the uh, error. Uh, okay, yeah, we were going to reverse <coughs> the stream, right? Mm -hmm. So we save this. And we start it, and we run here. Mot layman Adam, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we reversed some strings. <laughs> I guess we can do that in Python or even JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you, you reverse the entire string? What about reversing the order of the different components? Yeah, you could do that, but then I will have to write one of those blocks. I can do it. In five minutes. Okay. If so, uh, but if you go back to the, uh, um, to the graph. Yeah. Let's see now. Um, okay. So okay. So you reverse each uh, bit by itself. Each part. Part. Yeah, part. But I guess you can change to another delimiter, right? If you want. Uh, you can uh, split the strings by the underscore if you want to. Yeah. It's. Uh, well, that's what you did, right? It is. Uh, Okay, 
You're not really meant to see this, it's too far complicated. But, <laughs> but yes, of course, you have, you have a configuration in each instance of, of a block has its, its configuration. Yeah. And that is kind of what I'm working on now, is really, really making the configuration more and more and more easy. Mm. Um, and, and that is just, you know, just a, a lot of work to do that, so it's not really, it's not a problem. Uh, well, it is a problem in, in, in understanding how people would want to use it. So if you go to the left menu, uh, if I were to create, let's say, something like this and put it in some repository uh, as a component to use, that would show up then in the left-hand menu somewhere? Uh, you mean if you coded a block of your own? Uh, co make a component out of this. Yeah, this, uh, uh, you will be able to kind of package this service as a new block, okay, and then it will show up, uh, yeah, somewhere here mm. uh, under your yeah. like your own repo, and in, in, the, in the long run, you're also meant to you can share these services and, and stuff with other people mm. on Blocky, um, either for free or maybe you want to a few bucks for it if you have done something really cool that find, people find useful. So, so what one thought is that uh, people who love to create services and stuff can, can really do that, and people who just want to get stuff done can, can use your services. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at it in another way now. So I'm gonna start, now I'm going to start this in debug mode. Uh, there we are. Uh, yeah, so here it will show up uh, a new like instance of the session of, of the of the code kind of running. Uh, so I'm going to put this in uh, pause mode right away. I will run here. So now we are there, and we can see what data is coming in. Don't go in mode. Okay, so I step this. Step it one more time. Oh, okay, I see. I get on the post output. Uh, so I can see again. Okay, what do I have? Yeah, I have that. Here I have the, the HTTP <coughs> headers. I'll just step it further. Uh, step it one more time. Okay, so here we have split the original data. This is, this is the actual array. This is one of the things uh, I have to make a lot prettier. <laughs> And you, you will also be able to, uh, this is live, so this is just pausing live now. So you will be able to actually go in and modify your data directly. Uh, if you want to like, you debugging, and you want to like, oh, I wonder what happens if I just put this here. So you just do that. And you can see this, uh, yeah, this one is still waiting for, for us to be done. So uh, we step there. We go to iteration. Uh, yeah, so this is going to do uh, three iterations now. And we can see what it's. Uh... <coughs> oh, anyway, there's the data there. So what? So this is going to do, do three iterations, but I, I don't want to, want to step that. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint here. For when the flow is coming upstream on this port. So I'll just let that flow now, as it wishes. You can see. <laughs> so that was, yeah, two. This is the third iteration. Comes on out port, goes down, comes up again. Now it starts bubbling up now. Yeah, so you can see your data there. Um, I think just uh, keep stepping. Or I just, uh, yeah, it just lets it play through now. Goes up, comes up, comes up. Is the data from each step saved the entire trip? I mean, we could still see the original string array. Yeah, right. It is, uh, it depends on how you implement it. I can put, I could put a, like a filter block here just to keep uh, the ones that I want. So that would be, uh, and some blocks might 
filter out stuff or overwrite stuff. So it, it will be uh, one of the things that I'm looking at is how blocks can work together without with as little configuration as possible. Uh, for, for, because now now I haven't configured much because uh, uh, what comes in here is like. Uh, they use the same slots. They are like compatible in their configuration from vanilla. But uh, yeah, by default, the data uh, follows you until you might filter it out. So there is a. Okay, can you store it between calls as well? Uh, here you can like filter. Store it between calls. Um, so the next time you call it, if you. It will remember the previous something from the previous call, perhaps. Uh, like the counter, for instance, could you do that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, you will store. There's a message going through here, uh, and whatever you store in message is going to be in the message until you delete it or overwrite it. So you can have a counter, but it will it will follow you. So but will no, it but die I'm when it returns to public entry? Yeah. yeah. So if, if you want to store the data, then then you will have then you will use some kind of storage block for that. Like a database. Yeah, I'm using a document. I can show you another service. I'm using a document store. Are you supposed to be able to add your own components uh, or blocks from this UI, or or do you do do that in code, or? Uh, the first. The first step in, in making your own stuff is, uh, is uh, packaging whatever you've done into a new block. Okay. That is the first. Some, somewhere down the line, it will be fun to, to let people actually code their mm. own blocks. Mm. Because it's not very hard. It's, uh, it's not very hard to code uh, thanks to the platform that is you know, supporting this. And, and the concurrency. Uh, and multi-threading uh, and scalability is just just taken care of. Okay. So so when you when you press that start button, Blocky is gonna know when when it has to uh, instance uh, your service again on another machine on and on another machine. And uh, you might even not know this, but uh, if you're not using your service, Blocky might no not have it running. <laughs> <laughs> but when you access it, it will just instantiate it like that. Which is also a, a, a safe thing because if uh, service breaks down, which, which they always do, uh, you, you, you will not notice that, of course. Because it will say, okay, th there's nothing running, I'll just instantiate this service on the fly. Mm. So you have like a um, microsecond delay if that happens. So. Another question there the, the imports, you can have more than one imports, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can have as many as you like. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, are, are you thinking of using them as kind of specifying parameters as well? Like, what I mean, kind like, of like option or what do you mean? Yeah, like using it like option ports. You have data data flowing in on one mm -hmm. and kind of options on the other. Ones. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely possible mm. to have to have like it comes in on one import and then you wait for for something to come in on other. Yeah. I've I've done that in uh, um, I've done that uh, upstream, not downstream, uh, as you're talking now. Then, uh, yeah. like this, for instance, <coughs> uh, here we can uh, we can split the signal. I'll just remove this. So th this uh, this will split the signal in a primary and a secondary. So we'll have you'll have parallel flows going out, and then you can have. Uh, uh, like you can have a fusion, uh, a fusion box. It says in times two here. So so if, if you split something, uh, you, you can just end up with both your inflows here. It will wait for for the split to be uh, fused back before it just continues. Okay, but this is then it's the same data type. You're waiting for two instances of the same. Type of data from, from the uh, yeah it, it's the spawn from the original flow those two yeah so I, I was thinking like totally different types 
mm. like uh, options, flags on off or whatever. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You can have. Uh, There's nothing. Mm. I, uh, I, mean, I can write one, one for you if you like. <laughs> so it's not really. Uh, yeah, I, I just because I've heard it being discussed in, in yeah. all this. They seem to be using it like that. Okay. Like um, instead of hard coding parameters inside a block. Okay, you send you the, have it kind of send the config. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. exa exactly sure how, how No, but it sounds very sounds very useful. Yeah. So maybe I will implement it. <laughs> yeah. Right now right now I'm I'm taking configuration uh, through the flow mm -hmm. through some uh, some of the slots. Um, but that's, that is that right. is. Uh, but but the, yeah, that sounds like the thing I'm after in a way. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't. have you um, any thoughts along the lines of using this to control, let's say, uh, multiple instances of, of uh, uh, computing on Amazon? Or I'm thinking obviously of, of Opax. Uh, if we can set up a pipeline for processing our genomics data and do that on Opax, but using this as the definition. So defining in, within this and mm -hmm. having blocks put in says Upmax computing resource. And I simply connect it up and then all the work is done there. Uh, you said Amazon? What, what, well, well some, some remote computing resource. So yeah. you, have, you have this on one machine and then have some, some computing resources somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's where the hard work is going to be done. But this controls it. Yeah, absolutely. You just, I mean, as you said, you can, uh, sorry. You can have, uh, you can communicate with your, like, uh, if you use a send block, you can send uh, some kind of either data or just some kind of instructions to, to another service that is, you know, anywhere, really. So, yeah, it's not, not a problem. It's a little bit uh, contrived, perhaps, but what if you, you said you could split the signal, yeah, and you have... Uh, like two public cells and each signal going to another public cell, uh, they could like come in at different times, right? The, the signal could continue uh, non deterministically, right? And uh, how, how do you deal with order when it comes to uh, signals that have been split? Uh, you, when you want to, to uh, kind of uh, join them together again. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, one is primary and one is secondary. Yeah. So, which so means? Uh, uh, we wait for, for both to come in, doesn't matter which order, but then, then when we uh, use the data, uh, the primary has, uh, uh, is, is, yeah, is primary. So we, we will take the return data that bubbles up from the primary. So in this rare case, this is kind of meant to uh, uh, the second secondary flow you can use to um, you storing stuff. You might be uh, you want to read a lot of stuff from from some data store uh, while you you are still uh, uh, serving the client with something. Mm. So and then instead of doing this in serial. Uh, so, so this is a way of kind of par parallelizing your work, and then. Um, the split is really duplicate, duplicate the data. It's the same data. All the data goes out, out, out both of the primary and secondary. Uh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And uh, absolutely, and uh, there will probably be, be a configuration to to just uh, to have the secondary just to be kind of just an empty empty thing to, to trigger something. So what does the fusion component do exactly? If, if, if you split it and, and the data is manipulated in different ways and then it comes in to the fusion component, what, what, what does that do? Does uh, that the fusion component waits for the primary and the secondary. Yeah. Uh, fuses them together to, to one message again. And if they are different, if they have been manipulated differently along the way? Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the primary is, uh, is the dominant one. They will override. Yeah, okay. but, but it's, it's very easy to make some, some kind of other block that uh, takes things into account. I don't mm. know. You can configure that uh, I want these variables from the primary and these from the secondary. Mm. Okay. Uh, can you use it for another example, sort of a, 
a synchronous web service? Can you do it for, use it for asynchronous stuff, real time stuff as well? Or, is that um, possible? Or? Some, you can give some example. I don't know. Uh, could you do um, uh, like a, a chat server running in WebSockets or something like that? Could you? Yeah. yeah. But uh, all these components are running in concurrently, in concurrent mode, right? Yeah. They're kind of eating, eating, eating information packets and sending. Mm, yeah, yeah, I guess that's the way to say it. Yeah. Uh, how do you have like these channels? Are they also buffered? For example, you have a max limit and so on, and um, so, like so you can trigger a block if, if it's full or something. Or how do you do it? Um, Right now, the the limita only limitation is uh, for for a kind of uh, your outbound and inbound uh, stuff that can, comes from the network. Not there's not no limitations within right now. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's things that, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. But you have buffer in the in the connections, or are they kind of immediately sent them? And uh, no, they're, they're kind of queued. Yeah. They're yeah. queued. So, yeah. That's maybe buffered. Yeah, I guess. It's, yeah. Yeah. In this case, you have a, a HTTP call in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, would, is it possible to, to have a web sockets w which uh, would stream continuous signals? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how would those those uh, multiple signals be handled in the in the flow. Uh, streaming is one thing that is uh, not not really really addressed really now. Okay. But uh, oh yeah, I, I shouldn't get go too deep into that. But uh, it will be addressed at least. Yeah. It will be. How do you see the sort of li application lifecycle if I have a created version 1.0 of my, my backend service and then I want to sort of make an upgrade to that without mm -hmm. interrupting uh, existing service? I... Uh, when, when you, uh, this has a name uh, and when you deploy it, it will, it will be given a, uh, a version number. Okay. So whenever you, whatever you're running live in production mode is a certain uh, version. Okay. So, uh, when you change this uh, and you feel you're, you're ready to uh, upgrade, uh, if, if they are compatible, you can just kind of close down and, and do this very seamlessly. But of course, if they're not compatible, it's uh, maybe you have to shut them all down for a second and bring them up again. Mm. Mm. All right. Very cool. Mm -hmm. When 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 is, when are you aiming for one dot zero? Um, I want to get into some some kind of early release, uh, hopefully in, in Mars or something, for for those who want to be early adapters. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have we have come a long way. Like the biggest thing that is that has to be done is really the us usability, the interface, mm -hmm. to make it more and more uh, comfortable. Uh, how will it scale? Is each component hosted by a, a separate process, or is it uh, the same thread? Or no, uh, there there is one process with uh, the same amount of threads as uh, as you have uh, support for in your hardware. Yeah, but but in terms of one flow, one signal. Yeah. Is that within one thread? No, no, that, that, that is multi-threaded. Okay, so um, you what? could switch thread between each component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a worker pool. Worker pool. Yeah, it's a worker pool. Yeah. So could you say something about, uh, like, uh, the concurrency implementation and so on? It's using like mutexes and so on. Or mm. it's, it's basically dealing with all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that is, of course, in the in the C++ core. Yeah, yeah. Um, queuing. But it's it's locking on the on the information packets. Yeah, there is uh, some locks, of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and it, the goal has always been to uh, 
to really that's why we 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 moved to C plus plus because we really we really want to just squeeze the juice of all all the servers, and uh, so concurrency has been uh, like on the agenda all the time, mm -hmm. and at the same time, <coughs> people who use blocks but also people who code blocks when I write a block. It is really concurrent and everything, but I don't. I don't have to think about that. So I can write. A, I can write a new block really, really quick, and I know it's going to be safe. Are you sure? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be shy. Okay. But you code in Lua or in C plus plus or C++? Uh, Most of the most of the blocks are coded in Lua. Yeah. So that's why it's so so quick to write them. Um, but some. Some of the blocks are, are actually implemented in C++, like, um, uh, like, like the socket communication. So, yeah, but, but I mean, to, to, to reverse a string, uh, <laughs> it was going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned this about multi-node or running some things across nodes. So that, yeah. that would, that would uh, then you, you would need uh, multiple networks running. One network, for for instance, and then communicating over some mm -hmm. kind of, of sockets or channel, right? So w one network cannot. You c can you scale one network across more than one node? Uh, but or do you explicitly need to design? By network, do you actually mean the? Like a, a data center, or what do you? No, do you no, mean? I mean this the graph. for the graph. Ah, okay. How it scales? Yeah, or yeah. Can, can you let it run seam seamlessly across more than one node? Uh, or do you mm -hmm. do you need to kind of write one part of the network here and then have explicitly des designed some connection to the other node and, and have another network? That uh, uh, what happens is that, that this uh, what I call a service yeah. is instantiated on uh, one or many nodes. <laughs> Okay, like in parallel. Yeah. Like. Okay. But a, a single signal can't be across several nodes. No, no, no. That is in, no. within one process. Yeah. Uh, Multi-threaded, but in one process. So but every, every line you see there is, is something that's local to the computer. Uh, sorry? Every line that you see there is lo needs to be local to the computer. Uh, yeah. As soon as something is in on the public entry, it will be handled in one process until uh, you might do a public send. Mm -hmm. It will end up anywhere that the block is used. Mm -hmm. uh, can I also ask, what where, where do you see this being really used? Where is, what is the best use for this tool? Or who do you see, think really should use it? Yeah, that's kind of what I want you to tell me. <laughs> but. Uh, from the beginning, I kind of made this for myself, or, or the, the underlying platform, because I just felt this is the last platform I will ever use or need. And then the, the, I was thinking about, okay, uh, maybe I should visualize it. So uh, I really want, as you guys are talking about, to, to broaden the concept of who can create uh, stuff on the internet. Um, that is one thing, but also I want it to be much, much quicker to, to create things. So it's, it's, it is very general. And you can almost, you know, you can make what you want. Um, and I, um, yeah, I've done, I've done a few applications and, uh, you know, some email, listening to emails and, and processing incoming emails. And, uh, have you done any like performance testing and comparing with similar? Uh, no, I have no, I have done none of the comparisons. No, just, just, I just been, I have been very focused on making it as good as possible. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's why I, I, I left the scripting world for C plus plus. Yeah, yeah, I, I find it, uh, it's uh, attractive that you, that it focuses on. It. Thank you. How are you going to um, make this available to the world? Is it How were, will I? Well, well, I mean, you, you, you can imagine that you setting this up as a cloud service, 
uh, and yeah. letting people use it as such, or uh, make all the source code available also, so people, we, we for instance, could set mm. up our own service server I with this internally. Uh, in one way, those kind of projects would be very interesting to, to try out. Um, but that, uh, the plan we have now is to, to put it up as a service. Mm -hmm. You 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 create your account and you start creating your stuff and you, you just you press the play button and, and you can run your stuff, connect your domain name and what you what you want. So uh, and running like off-site uh, instances, like in your case, I mean, it could be fun, but that, that's not really what we are aimed for. So. Do you think it would be? Um like hobbyists or rather companies that have a need for quickly iterating on, on web services that will be the primary audience for, for tools like this? Mm, I think uh, the primary audience, audience in the beginning will be uh, front-end developers yeah. who want to make back-end, oh. I think, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, I mean, it is quite easy. Uh, it will get more more easy, mm. but if you have some coding experience, like uh, you are a designer or something, mm. I think you can really use this really, really, really easy. Mm. And in the long run, I want to make it so very simple that you don't have need to have a programming background. And I also think that uh, like I've been in touch with a few people. There, there are like business people. They have a lot of ideas. Uh, they can't code it themselves, but, but they are kind of handy with the computer. Mm. And uh, they go to back-end guys and they are either busy or they are too expensive. And uh, you know, with this thing you can, like, you can get an idea Friday, you can present a prototype on Monday. Mm. Mm. Why, why have you studied if, if that is <coughs> a true assumption? Um, mm. Because when many people think about programming, they think about writing text-based, I mean, lines of code stuff. And w when we have presented our concepts to some people that we, we can create interactive graphics without writing, typing characters, basically, mm -hmm. they've said, wow, that's cool, that I can create interactive graphics because they they think that the problem is actually typing the characters, but that's just one part of programming. Everyone knows that not being a good programmer is not just about being able to type characters <laughs> and know the syntax. It's very much about uh, structuring a problem, breaking it down yeah, into the small parts and so on. And if you're not used to that, but it's pretty difficult to program even if you don't have to type any characters. Even if you connect boxes, you need to think about what these boxes do what the what's the logical yeah. steps of yeah you're right you have to you have to have you, uh, you need an interest in in the logic and the flow yeah and what we will help you with it we will take away the syntax so at least making it easier but absolutely the, the other part but the part you're talking about is the fun part <laughs> yeah like the architecture and the, the flow and stuff yeah it's not easy no of course that, that takes a lot of uh, that takes a lot of, of the thought as well, absolutely. But but I think one aspect is that a system like this looks much more approachable and accessible yeah. than, than a text-based system. And also that Thomas has sort of removed the need for setting up your own servers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you, the, mid, the, the second you drag in your HTTP connector, you have something responding to a request. Instead of something that you have to configure your own server and get your development environment up and running and so on. Yeah. Of course you could solve that with a web interface as well, but uh, he you solved. lower the barrier to get started. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. when you're started you you kind of mm -hmm. find your way yeah. forward even yeah. though you're not an expert. So it definitely makes it easier. Yeah. Then some many people won't know what what the string split does. I mean mm -hmm. if you explain it to them what they would yeah, of make the connection with how yeah. Yeah. Are, am I, are I going to use this to I think it's going to be, um, at least I'm hoping for it, that it will be kind of an interesting thing that when people can uh, publish their own services as blocks, 
to see kind of will there be kind of a shift or, or will there will it come as some kind of paradigm mm -hmm. <laughs> that we didn't think about yeah that is uh, very fit for people who, who do, does not have this background yeah now, um, uh, someone mentioned before that uh, we're using or many people use uh, galaxy uh, web service to, to produce pub guys uh, with their mathematics and one of the drawbacks of that as far as i understand is that it's very hard to actually publish the programs you made to make them then available to others to use mm -hmm. and i see this is definitely a, a step forward in that respect so i think right. I mean, this this is something we should have a look at mm -hmm. so we have this uh, uh, problem always of lots of uh, biomedical people <coughs> scientists researchers who, who know the basic ideas of what goes on in mathematics but they don't know the technicalities the coding mm -hmm. and uh, so, so there is there is kind of a, an audience for this kind of thing i think there mm -hmm. so i think that would be very inter interesting to explore cool. yeah. mm -hmm. the new performance is very important yeah i mean we, and that's what i said, said also about uh, remote com computing resources if you if you know that you have some bits and pieces that require a huge amount of uh, resource you have those as blocks and you don't have to worry about that the only thing you have to, you need to worry about is wiring up so you get the mm -hmm. correct parameters the correct files and everything into the right place and then they're doing the crunching and you don't really have to worry about that so okay. yeah so that's a kind of view yeah um, put the crunching on amazon or or mm -hmm. new dungeon mm -hmm. and, and they are I, I guess in bioinformatics, there's what the biggest problem. I guess is that it's quite re relying a lot of, on the existing software. People want to use because there are so it's, the area is so wide. So often they would want to use a specific software that solves mm -hmm. one problem. So so then I think in wrapping some means to wrap existing software and maybe pipe to it or something might yeah. be needed in, in that. So then you could have like, um, there will be of course kind of a HTTP uh, client block, mm -hmm. so you can kind of see URL to to some external service. Mm -hmm. you could you could define. I mean, not all your arrows or all your lines are internal, right? But they have sort of semantics, and you could you could put that on a socket and abstract that away as well. You, you could probably do a service like that, so you don't have to do the public send or something like that. You yeah, step, I mean, skip that step. If you have another, yeah. if you have another of this service running somewhere else. If, if that was my problem, that I need an external tool, I would of course just uh, make a block that uses this tool, mm. maybe in a, in a separate thread. Uh, uh, so I would can, because I have access to hack it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, and one, one thing is how do how can I put that access in, in the, into others' hand in a good way? Mm -hmm. But I mean, a way to execute a command and pipe to it one line at a time. I guess that's the Unix uh, interface, more mm -hmm. or less. Th that is very very common. Yeah. In my, my mathematics. Mm -hmm. I think we need to uh, mm -hmm. take a small break and, and uh, then continue with the last, last conversation. Yeah.